Ladies, hey, congratulations for finding her beat documentary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More of a congratulations. Uh, it's being showcased at the Mill Valley Film Festival. How do you all feel about that? A little bit over the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's very excited. <laughs> bringing the whole family. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure you know it's very very long uh, um, production process for something like this. It's a uh, it's a good feeling that uh, it's it's going to come to screen on onto screen for uh, for all of you. So this this is this is great. Anyways, I checked out the film um, Finding Her Beat. I I found it fascinating. I it's it's funny is just because la last month I. I was excited just to uh, had a female teppanyaki chef, but uh, <laughs> but but this 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 is a, this is even better. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> so so tell us um, where the origin or origination of the idea for this uh, documentary came from in the first place, Don or Carrie? Don. Uh Oh, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> so the the film came from a lunch between myself and Jennifer Weir. Uh, she and I have been friends for, you know, 20-ish years. And uh, we're having our lunch talking about what it is to be a woman creating in our various industries, myself in film, Jen in Tycho. And uh, she mentioned that she had this amazing concert that she was planning coming up in two years. And, you know, would I be interested in helping uh, document it by filming the concert itself? And I, I was like, well, yeah, that'd be nice. But actually, this is a film. This is absolutely a film. And we would follow the players leading up to the concert and then had this, you know, grand concert. And Jen was like, oh, right on. <laughs> Jen, Jen's attitude in the world is definitely that anything that you know has power has joy connected to, to it she will jump on board and is a champion and so we we started oopsie earbud fell out we <laughs> we started after that meeting to put our resources together and then I connected with Carrie uh, who we'd never worked together either um, but had admired each other's work for quite some time. We're a part of a group called Film Fatales. And so we, we met at our meetings and I was like, Carrie, what do you think of this project? I've always admired Carrie's visuals in particular. She's a director of photography as well as director and was for this film. So um, Carrie loved it and off we went. And, and I really loved, um, sorry to jump in, Carrie. I really loved Don and Carrie's approach of wanting to have all of the folks behind the camera sort of reflect the people in front of the camera as well. So we really, you know, everyone worked hard to have as many female, non-binary, Asian, queer artists um, behind the camera as well as in front. And so it made for a very wonderful, extended um, creative family through the whole through the whole production. Carrie? Uh, yes, I just, when I heard, uh, I love when um, a project can originate having wine on a rooftop <laughs> with a bunch of women film directors. And, you know, who knew that um, that this would go and take us as far as it has, because the journey has been so rewarding from meeting Jen and being able to learn along the way about Tycho and to learn about how women have been kept off of the stage. Uh, you know, of course, doing a documentary film is a journey for everyone. I like to say that it's a I like buying a one-way expensive ticket to an unknown destination. <laughs> and that's what it was because it was a two-year journey. And along the way, we really didn't know if it would be completed. But the elements that I saw in it that resonated with me for my work is that it's really about family and community. And mm -hmm. I'm interested in an intimate approach to revealing the lives of people living on the margins. And I believe this film has all of those things. Wow. Jennifer, in your words, could, how do you describe Tycho to someone who doesn't know Tycho? 
Oh, well, it's it's a visceral experience. It's there there the drums are large like um like wine barrels and and you play with your whole body. Um so it's this interest it lives at this intersection between music and percussion, um dance and martial arts and then it has the energy of like a sporting event. And all of this based in like a very, you know, specific cultural and community practice. So um it kind of has it all and in in some ways it it um it really lights people up and it gives you more energy than you had when you um came into the room and and it's healing and it's loud and it's rowdy and it's it's joyful um and uh, you know there's something about women doing something you know that they have been banned for centuries doing it so well that just the act of drumming becomes a revolutionary experience. Like you just feel it, you know, you feel it when they like literally in your chest, like the sound vibrations, like you can feel in your chest. So um, taiko drumming, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I kind of feel like it's, it has this untapped power to, to, to heal the world if everyone just could drum a few minutes every day. <laughs> It sounds difficult, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, yes. Um, you can dedicate your whole life to it and still feel like a student, you know. But at the same time, its origins are in folk, um, are in folk art. So it's something that is designed by its very nature, from young to old. Whether you have training or no training, like there's always an entrance point into it that's for the people from the people. So um, it's very accessible. Um, you just need some very large instruments in a place where you can be very loud. <laughs> Definitely not in my neighborhood. So, uh, <laughs> so that takes care of that. Uh, Carrie Don, it, so it sounds like you didn't have to convince Jennifer to participate in this documentary at all. But what about everybody else? Was there was there a need for convincing for you know for the re for the rest of participants? You know, I'll I'll let Carrie answer this um, after me because I think that she has some more information than I do in that regard. Um, as the director of photography, she was really, you know, in everything. But I will say that um, it's a blessing to have Jen Jen as your champion. Uh, because Jen was able to say, listen, guys, here's Don, here's Carrie, they're awesome. Um, they will absolutely be respectful. Like she, she set the stage so that the trust was there, um, pretty much from the beginning. And I do think that, you know, obviously with any film that build, builds over time, nobody's used to being on camera, but when they're on camera for, you know, <clears throat> 10, 15 hour days, eventually you, you stop paying attention <laughs> and you just live your life and you do what you you do best but um absolutely the the trust was was there from the beginning because jen has you know trust within her community i think that um you know the aspect of cultural differences between american culture and japanese culture definitely uh, revealed itself in many ways in this film. And I think it was an unusual situation to be granted the kind of access that we were granted with Kaoli and with Chieko. And um, because of that very private nature of the Japanese culture, and um, as it is revealed, I think, in, uh, in the film, that you know, we do break down cultural barriers by, in the process of making this film, um, people were transformed. And so it was a risk for everyone to come on board. I think the, the part where the reluctance revealed itself is at the heart of the feature, and that is the women questioned whether they were good enough to be asked to be on the stage in the first place because of, of so many years of not being allowed to be on the stage. I think when they were invited and called all stars, they all felt, I'm not a star. I'm not, I'm just, you know, a taiko player. And what was uh, <clears throat> revealed to I think there was a transformation of the women in the film where in the course of the time we filmed, we got to see them transform 
and claim that power and claim that center stage space in a really powerful way. Wow, Jennifer, could you could you comment about the uh, participants, uh, you know, of your uh, of her beat here? Yeah, so these these um, are artists that are my heroes. You know, when I started this project, I basically made a dream list of all the people I would love to work with and all the people that people I admire would love to work with. And so to get everyone in a room, they're they're each their own leaders. They're used to running the show. They're used to like. The, uh, they all have their unique and strong visions and, and paths that they forge. So getting them into the room together was just electric to begin with. Um, and quite honestly, I was amazed that people said yes to me because half of them never even heard of me before. And I said, I've got this great idea. Tiffany Tamarabuchi and I are bringing all of the best talent together in the world for the first time. And we want you to be there, you know. Um, and so it was it was this kind of loaded special moment where everyone felt like, wow, it's amazing that we're all here and that we haven't been gathered like this before. Um, and there was also a ton of pressure, like, who am I to be here and what how can I show my best self? And, you know, and how can we sort of, you know, um, come together in this short amount of time? Um, but the one thing that I kind of wanted to show with this film is that, um, you know, they, they, they're, they're these extraordinary pioneers, these leaders who just break through and make amazing things happen. But but people tend to think of them or box them um, into a definition of a unicorn, like something magical and special. And they don't realize that they're a proof of concept, that there are like a stage full of people who can do the same thing. There are 10 stages full if you just give them the, the space, the opportunity, the spotlight to show what they can do. And so this was an example, especially for the Tycho community, that not just one, not just two, but a stage full of extraordinary female non-binary artists um, are ready to lead, to lead and to um, celebrate their art and their voice and to really expand the definition of what Tycho is and can be. And so, you know, it, it, to say that it was like a, a um, a career high is, is an underestimate because it was sort of this miraculous thing. And, you know, again, it's a simple concept, bringing people together. But then when I was talking to Donna Carey too, I was like, how many films have I ever seen in my life that are filled with Asian women and Asian American women? And how many films have I seen that do not focus on their trauma, but celebrate their power? like? I don't know, honestly, if I've seen that before. So like that was a really exciting thing for me to to put forward. And I think everyone was excited about it, but also, you know, um, intimidated by the opportunity in a way, too, just because it did feel so special. It is, it is uh, very special. And I and I also have to admire the fact that uh, it's a, you know, uh, you know, all fe female uh, Taiko performance and, and so on. But, uh, but I, I want to ask the filmmakers um, yourselves, because uh, as uh, female directors, how much, uh, how much did you also rely upon uh, like a female production crew? I had, um, uh, for the very first time ever, I got to have a second camera person <laughs> with me. Um, for the whole journey, which um, Cinema Verite and filming in Cinema Verite is so exciting. It is so hard and um, very, very challenging and uh, very exciting. And so I was able to um, succeed, I think, in part because of the amazing cinematographers who worked with me. And so we had um, Carolyn Mariko Stuckey in uh, America and then uh, Shiho Fukada in Japan uh, as my second camera. And so I would say we relied heavily on the women. Sorry, I jumped in. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that also, I think that just finding our crew, um, you know, I think that both myself and Carrie have actively looked for women to collaborate with in mm -hmm. the past. So we had some of that network, but there was some of that network that did not exist. Uh, and so, you know, we we did a little bit of, 
of searching. And I think that that is a, a lesson for filmmakers is, is do your homework look for those collaborators they're out there and they're amazing and i think that there's a tendency to be like i don't know any in my network i don't know where they are you know and and it's like they're they're right here you just didn't meet them at that that network networking event you went to <laughs> and and they're enthusiastic you know i think that there's we've talked about that this film this um everything about the production everything about the story it was time and, you know, we'd put the story out there, we'd say, hey, we're doing this thing. And I've never had such positive reception from collaborators, from funders, from anybody, because they all felt it. It was like, yes, I want to do this. <clears throat> and and they had the skills to back that up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's been a dream working with, you know, 99% women. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And actually, we've been calling ourselves the dream team uh, for the last few weeks because we've been working on the final sound mix at Skywalker, um, which we were able to work with uh, the, you know, only woman who's ever won an Oscar for sound remixing. You know, it's just like all of these people who are like, it's time and it's been dreamy and I'm I'm just going to do this for the rest of my life. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for, for giggles, J Jennifer, behind the scenes, was it also comprised mostly of women? Yes, yes. I would say though, our Tyco group, um, Enzo Daiko, based here in Minnesota, there are several fellas in the group and they were 1000% on board, like helping as well. Like you know, hauling drums and driving vans and getting food and coffee and, you know, all of the thankless tasks that keep us set and keep a, um, keep our production rolling. So they were there helping us. And, you know, there was a two year fundraising effort that they were a part of as well. So, oh, and in fact, I, you know, shout out to the fellows. There are some professional taiko players who flew in from the West Coast just to be backstage and help out. Um, because they were so excited about this this um, this event, so it was a coming together. You know, um, it was a time to like make space. And you know, I would say the the thing is that now, um, you know, traditions have changed, and of course now women can play taiko. And in fact, maybe two thirds of taiko players are now women. But that participation doesn't equal equity. And that's the thing that we were really pushing this idea of who tells the story, who is featured, who is on center stage versus who is on the sidelines and who is, um, you know, pay, pay skills, accessibility, leadership, all the things that we're pushing for. So we really were taking, um, taking a simple concept, but making a revolutionary act and everything that Carrie and Don did behind the scenes just reflected and amplified that even more. And I love their approach too of, um, it's a leap of faith, I think, that cinema verite approach where you're like, let the cameras roll and have the belief that the, the compelling story is going to emerge, you know, in the 10,000 hours of footage. And the way that they made that happen to me is, is quite stunning. And so it just like takes what was once a, a good idea here that kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And, and, I, and I'm so thrilled that we can share not only the art of Tycho and these amazing stories, but these amazing directors. Like, yay, it's a win-win all around. <laughs> that is excellent. Now, um, I, I want to address one more thing on the film, um, and and it was such a tension builder itself. Not 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 only with the you know the Tycho drums, but the pandemic itself, um, because uh, because that was that was the big question mark, you know, through throughout uh, throughout your film um, process. Um, Carrie, Don, um, how how did you handle this uh, this this pandemic thing that, that was up on the horizon as a film as filmmakers. Well, I think what you saw happening on screen was happening behind the scenes as well, and so uh, we were all learning what is this, what's emerging. We had never heard the word Corona or Corona nineteen or the virus and. So uh, I, we had no idea either, um, you know, true confession, I got super sick. 
I, I lost a couple of days of, of three days, maybe, of filming. Uh, and uh, so it was brutal. And there was no, um, there was no understanding. There were no, you know, I mean, I remember on the day of our big performance, there had only been one death in America at that stage. And, or, you know, it was really just so brand new for everyone it, that we were in the same, on the, behind the camera, we were in the same situation as in front. We also, I mean, I'll say that um, we, it's, it's more in retrospect that you realize what happened. Right. And so, you know, it's like, we'll go back to the footage when we started editing and we were deep in coronavirus and, you know, everything was locked down and it was like, we barely made it you know yeah. that concert <laughs> and you know because I think that also during that time it was like how big is this going to be are we going to be out for a week or two you know like what's going to happen and didn't realize that it was going to be this life altering for everyone um and you know I, I actually when I was going back and editing it I went through all of the nightly news reports that were on the nights that we were filming and you could see that in the news. You could see that they were like, oh, this thing is happening. We don't know what it is. And then some other headline story for a few days. And then, oh, but this Corona thing, it might be a thing. No, you know, like, so we were, <laughs> we were all in that space. And then in retrospect, I mean, it's like for the first few times we finally had the ending of the film locked, I cried every time. It's so beautiful and powerful. And yet I was like, the timing of it was so poignant. So, yeah. I'm going to toss it to you, uh, Jennifer. Um, in reality, how close were you on possibly canceling that uh, that concert? And do you, and looking back, do you feel incredibly lucky? Um, we were not planning to cancel that concert under any circumstances. We would have fought, you know, tooth and nail for it. Um, and then in retrospect, you realized how lucky we were. In fact, things changed so quickly that we were concerned that some of our artists wouldn't make it out of the country to fly home. Um, so for us, it was like, just wow. Like we had no idea how the skin of our teeth it was. And, you know, again, most of us didn't work and didn't perform for years. That was our last concert. Our, uh, we, didn't, we didn't even have a chance to like collect ourselves and like get together and talk about it. We just like stopped everything. Um, so for one, I was super grateful that the film um, production uh, could continue and the edit could continue and we could keep you know working behind the scenes while everything else in the world stopped. Um, but yeah, for us, it was it was so utterly shocking. I think there was one other show that made it on um, to that stage after us, and then that was it, lights out, and people were just scrambling to figure out what to do. Um, yeah, so it, it, it was such a, a, a milestone in so many ways for me, like personally, creatively, um, just the whole dynamic of when the world changed. It feels like it all kind of like came together with that project. So um, yeah, it was profound in many ways. Most excellent. Well, let, let me uh, wrap it up with one one last uh, question. And uh, as you know, Mill Valley Film Festival get, will have a chance to, uh, to watch and hopefully more audiences uh, everywhere. What is the one most important take that uh, you hope that uh, your audiences would walk away with after watching your documentary? It's not about Tycho. <laughs> <laughs> Not and fun. yet it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, that's a. I, I think it's 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 about women claiming their space center stage, and that transcends. It, it clearly is. Tycho is an amazing opportunity to show that in a big, powerful way with massive drums. But you can do this in any industry, in any field, in any um, you know art that is predominantly male. We could do a finding her beat. We could find a, I don't know, finding her, what are we doing? Uh, cello, you know, <laughs> you could do this across the board. And so this is an example, I think, of something much bigger. Somebody had actually said to us 
you know, that I forget who said this and maybe you guys can help me on this, but the, the statement about bringing your own chair, you know, that this is about women no longer saying, waiting for somebody to invite them to the table, but it's like, I'll just bring my own chair. That's fine. Yeah. And for me, it's about redefining power on your own terms. Like you don't have to look the same and you don't have to be the same, but you can redefine that power and claim that power on your own. And in doing so, like make <laughs> make things better for everyone. And not only in the Taika world, but as Don said, in the film world and, you know, and in every area where where you're looking at someone um, in the margins and, and they need their chance and their opportunity to step forward. And for me, selfishly, you know, especially for me and my daughter, I just want her to have as many role models and references for badass, powerful Asian women wherever she can look. So I just want that to be everywhere in the world because that's um, <laughs> that's my sweet spot of happiness. <laughs> And, and I feel I feel amazing uh, that what I feel like I've learned through this process what women can do together, because what we've achieved together is so much more than I ever could have done um, making the film by myself, which is, you know, where I think Dawn and I both come from. And so uh, I, I would say that what happened in front of the stage also happened for us behind the stage too. And the film helped empower me as a filmmaker. Excellent, excellent. Well, congratulations once again for finding her beat. Thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation. And uh, it, it is a truly inspirational film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having yeah. us. Thanks, Gig. Thank you. Thank you.